Hello everybody. Been a little bit under the weather, so hopefully this video will be somewhat coherent. Our next camera is the Nikon Coolpix L310. This particular model uh, was introduced in February of 2012. It's part of their Life or Lifestyle. I've seen both online series. Kind of a budget consumer. Um, a lot of them have kind of a super zoom though. This one is 14.1 uh, megapixels, uses a 1 over 2 thirds inch CCD sensor that's uh, 8.6 by 6.6 .6 millimeters. The ISO range uh, goes from 80 to 6400. Gets pretty mushy uh, from 400 and above. So you want to use a low ISO if possible. The auto ISO mode uh, goes between 80 and 800 and the uh, highest speeds 3200 and 6400 ISO. They're only usable if you're shooting uh, image sizes that are less than 3 megapixels. It's a center weighted metering. If you have digital zoom enabled and you have it up to 2x then it goes to spot metering. I think it's really using the same portion of the sensor for metering, but because you're so zoomed in, it's equivalent to a spot. Uh, it's got uh, it's auto exposure, but then you get uh, two stops, plus or minus, in third stop steps. So that's kind of nice. It gives you a bit of control. The zoom range is pretty impressive. It's the equivalent on a 35 millimeter of 25 to 525 millimeters, and it's powered. It uses this rocker around the shutter switch. Um, it's got vibration reduction. It uses sensor shift and electronic vibration reduction, which does work pretty well. Most of the time I've been shooting with this, I've just had it set at a fixed ISO 80. I think that's its native ISO and even handheld with the zoom all the way out over 500 millimeters I've gotten some decent shots with it it's pretty cool the lens is pretty nice it's 12 elements in nine groups the aperture goes from f3.1 widest um, when you're set to uh, the equivalent of 25 millimeters and it's f5.8 and wake the thing back up here. F5.8 widest when you're at maximum zoom. Uh, at widest, I think it only stops down to F8.7. Found that way down in the specifications. And the very smallest aperture, they just don't give it, and I'm not sure what it is. Um, it does use a neutral density filter to compensate for not being able to stop down as much. Uh, if I remember correctly, that's, I uh, think it's variable, but it's good for three stops. The shutter goes from four seconds to one four thousandth of a second. And there are some limitations on that, kind of like with the ISO. Uh, four seconds, I believe, is only available when you're in their fireworks scene mode. And one four thousandth of a second has a mode called Sport Continuous, shoots at less than 3 megapixels, and you get 4,000th of a second max shutter speed. For most scenes and auto mode, um, it's going to be 1 to 1,000th of a second. In that Sports Continuous mode, it'll shoot up to 15 frames per second, and again, that's less than 3 megapixel images. Uh, Normal modes at the highest resolution, about 14 megapixels, you get 0.7 frames per second. And that's really, the speed of it is dependent on how fast of an SD card you've got and what resolution you're shooting at. I don't know this for sure, but I think it uses the same mechanism for the mechanical shutter and for the aperture. So that would explain some of the strange seeming uh, limitations. It uses contrast detection autofocus. And then it's got a couple of other modes where uh, it autofocuses 
just what's in that little center square and it'll do uh, face detection as well. I haven't tried that honestly. Normal close focus is 50 centimeters. When you're in dedicated macro mode, it's easy to get to. It's a button on the back. So now it's in macro mode and now it's back out of it. Macro mode is good to down to one centimeter. So macro mode is pretty nice on this. The ability to get that close plus the good vibration reduction, it's a nice combination for doing close-up work. There is no uh, viewfinder, but it has a decent 3-inch LCD. It doesn't tilt or articulate or anything. It's 230,000 pixels. Movies, it's showing its age a little bit. It shoots 720p in, uh, with mono audio. And there's this dedicated button on the back to start video. So you can be just ready to shoot in a still image format. And just hit the button and you're doing a movie at whatever resolution you have set. The different modes are pretty easy to get to. You hit the green uh, button there. It has auto, smart auto, um, the sport continuous mode, smart portrait mode. I haven't monkey with that. I don't know what it does. And then a bunch of scenes, landscape and whatnot. I've used the uh, the fireworks mode and uh, I think one of the pet modes, but I really don't monkey with those much. These menus are almost identical to their weatherproof uh, cameras, like the one I'm shooting this video on, an AW100. So if you're used to Nikon menus, you'll feel right at home with this guy. The menus that you get, uh, they vary a lot depending on what mode you're in. And a lot of them are mutually exclusive, and that makes sense. Uh, one thing is kind of a drag for a really nice camera like this. There's no manual mode, and it doesn't have aperture or shutter priority modes. So the most basic thing you've got is this auto mode. But you can get in and monkey with your color, your white balance, exposure compensation. So it's not totally crippled like that. Has a decent flash. They don't give the guide number. One thing that's really nice is you don't have to always go into the menu and disable the flash if you don't want to use it. If you don't have it popped up, it's got the little circle with a slash through it and it can't do the flash. So you can leave it in auto mode and disable it just by closing it. So that's kind of nice. Um, at wide, the flash is good for a half a meter to six meters, and at maximum zoom, it's good for 1.5 to 3 meters. One thing I do really like about this camera, let me shut them off here, it uses four AA batteries. It's a really tight uh, metal reinforced uh, compartment lid here. That's also where your SD card goes. I had, that I bought new, a predecessor to this camera, an L100. I needed something better, didn't really know what I was doing with the camera yet. This was in 2009. I took a 10 megapixel L100 to Tanzania. And we climbed Kilimanjaro, and then we did a photo safari. And for me, not knowing what I did, and a camera at the time, I think I paid about 300 bucks for it, I got beautiful images. So this camera does what it's designed to do. Give you a nice zoom reach and take really good pictures even if you don't really know what you're doing. And you know my Safari pictures bear that out on the L100 and this is just an evolution of it. More pixels but other than that it's essentially the same camera. Anyway I wasn't looking for one of these, it just kind of crossed my path and I grabbed it for cheap. But I really like it. It's nice and it's a little nicer than just using your phone. So it's a good have with you camera because of the crazy zoom reach. So anyway, I may hang on to this guy, I'm not sure. But either way, I will see you then.